So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Cesar Portillo, and I'm a sound engineer who specializes in post-production and immersive sound. So before starting my presentation, I would like to describe to you the picture that I can see on the screen. What I can see is a white foggy light that has an oval shape which lies over a black screen. Now, how many of you agree with me on that description? Yeah? Well, for those of you who agree, thank you. And for those of you who didn't, you might be wondering, <laughs> why is he describing this? Or even that my description wasn't that accurate. Well, to be honest, this is not a picture. This is actually the way in which one of the participants that took part in my research described her sight condition. She has been blind from birth and has a 97% blindness range with some light perception. But although this is the way that she sees the world, it's not the same when she listens to audio description. Now, audio description is a form of translation in which visual information is conceived into verbal cues that allows blind and partially sighted audiences to understand and enjoy audiovisual mediums. But although audio description had had many benefits for its audience, it also has some inconveniences, which are related, which are a consequence of the lack of awareness and also the lack of implementation of inclusive designs within audiovisual mediums. In this presentation, what I will aim to do is to give you an overview of the current status of accessibility for the blind and partially sighted, the advantages and disadvantages of this service depending on the opinion of 15 experienced audio description users, and also how can we use sound effects, sound design, and also immersive sound alternatives to enhance the visual imagery of visually impaired people. But in order for you to understand a bit how audio description works, I, decide, I decided to prepare a video in order for you to understand how sound effects and audio descriptions become the eyes for this audience. A black screen slowly fades into dark blue and purple interstellar clouds that slowly rest on the deep black universe. A black and grey image of a skinny woman in her late twenties, with large lips and a slim face, slowly appears into the cosmos, whilst her eyes remain closed. Her long black hair reveals images of two boys and one girl reading multiple books. At the top of her head rests a brown circular loudspeaker array, in which Mars, Venus, Pluto, and a spaceship slowly navigate into its silhouette. From the top, the light grey moon slowly approaches, revealing a title on black. Films unseen. The woman's eyes abruptly open as the slide breaks into hexagonal figures, fading into black. As you can see from the video, being visually impaired doesn't mean that audiences have all the same sight condition. Their sight condition is different. Their experience is different. But thanks to audio description, they don't feel different from the content that fully sighted individuals can enjoy. As audio description, more than enhancing understanding and enjoyment, it also enhances self-esteem. Laws all around the world have encouraged the implementation of inclusive design within all audiovisual mediums. Nonetheless, user designers, developers, and even content creators fall into the tendency to consider accessibility an auction rather than a norm. And this results in not audiovisual medium, mediums being accessible for the blind and partially sighted, making, the, making them feel segregated from the content that fully sighted audiences can enjoy. But when we do consider accessibility, we tend to follow the common standards that provide a, a limitation to our audience to enhance visual imagery. And those start, standards are mainly based on lack of auditory display and lack of information. But also, they tend to follow, uh, developers tend to follow the tendency to create accessible content that follows their own tuition rather than the user's perspective. By doing that, we are, current, we are encouraging the, we are following a common assumption in which we create only one auction to people who have visual impairment, resulting in them not to have as many variations as possible for their content. And by doing that, we encourage the three main inconveniences among, all, among accessibility for audiovisual audio mediums, which are the lack of variation, the obscuring of the soundtrack, and also the content limitation. The first inconvenience is the content limitation. 
sorry, the lack of variation. When you open an application, you can customize it depending on your preferences and needs. When you go to the cinema, you can uh, decide how you would like to experience either in 2D, 3D, 4D, or even now virtual reality. But if you ask someone that is visually impaired, how many options do you have to enjoy audiovisual mediums? Their answer will be only one, and that is audio description. Oh, and the only variation is that they can turn it on and off. And that's it. So by following the common standards of accessibility, we are only provided one option to 285 million people that suffer from vision impairment around the world. But the main question is, do audiences like it? Do audiences want to experience something different? I asked those questions to, the parti to this participant, and she told me that I like audio description because it's my only option, but I also fear to complain. And according to her and the other 90% of the participants, they mentioned that they would like new experiences related that, that can be transmitted through audio description. And they, they also would like to be the owners of experimental experiences rather than the followers of common standards in accessibility. So how do we accomplish that? How do we build a bridge towards the future of accessibility rather than presenting our barriers to our audiences? We need to follow the steps in which we empathize, explore, and establish a connection between a content area of users by using not only words, but also sound technologies. The thing is what, that when we create a content, we normally tend to see sound because of its aesthetic features rather than its functional features. And that is when the second inconvenience occurs. The obscuring of the soundtrack is the second inconvenience that happens among audiovisual mediums. So neuroscientific research have proven that when a person loses his or her vision, they start to rely on their other four senses become more predominant, being hearing the one that they develop the most, as audiences will start relying on the atmospheric, aesthetic, informative, and immersive features of sound in order to navigate within their experience. But if we rely only on audio description or screen readers within our uh, content, what we will do is that we will not only obscure the role of sound in our medium, but we will also obscure the experience of our audience. So, sorry. But why this happens? Why we tend to obscure the role of sound within audiovisual mediums? This is because UI developers, designers, and content creators are mainly visual thinkers, meaning that they will see sound more because of its aesthetic features, rather than its functional features that could create user controls, memory loads, and also content creation. You might think that someone that is visually impaired is only an audio thinker, but that's not true. Visually impaired people are audiovisual thinkers, as words become the shapes of the elements that the describer is, is uh, intended to emphasize his translation on, and and the soundtrack becomes the colors that complement their experience. So how can we use sound in order to make our experience more um, accessible and entertaining for our audiences? First, we need to start um, representing as many visual elements as possible through the use of sound effects. In order for our audiences, in order for our description to be easier or not even necessary. Second thing that we have to do is to offer variations of sounds depending on actions. So one, multiple uh, sounds can be used to represent multiple actions, colors, characters, etc. But don't fall into the tendency to use only one sound to represent 1,000 actions, because that, that at the end doesn't offer a variation for our audiences. You also need to use audio signifiers in order to enhance the use of sound in certain elements for users to create a mental map in their heads. And lastly, you could use navigational systems that allows users to mark areas within their experiences that they can come back later by only listening to variations of pitch, intensity, and velocity of sound. Some examples of these alternatives include the Swamp, Pokemon Crystal, a blind legend, and also blindness. So when we create audiovisual mediums, we need to consider the aesthetic and also the functional um, features of sound in order for our content to be more accessible. 
I wish that I could tell you that every single visual element could be represented by a sound effects. But that's not true. And that is why we still need to rely on descriptive alternatives and variable description. But when we do rely on, the, on description, we tend to make it really limited. And that doesn't enhance the visual imagery of our audience. And that is when the next alternative, when the next inconvenience of accessibility comes into place. The um, audio description tends to suffer from offering a small amount of information compared to the one perceived from visual perception. And this is because of time limitations, short description, and use of um, and the word choice. Mm, but what happens in this case is that, for example, in films, audio describer tends to emphasize their translation between the dialogue of the characters, meaning that they will have a short amount of time to convey the full physical appearance of the character. And at the end, that tends to be a lot of focus on hair and eyes color. Now, if I ask you to watch the person that is sitting next to you, will only describing her, their hair and eye colors be enough to fully convey their physical appearance? Not, right? So we are limiting the visual imagery of our audiences by limiting our word choice. In artificial and, um, sorry, in AR and VR experiences, conveying a visual translation is even more difficult at everything happens in a real time basis. Mask. Sorry. As everything happens in a real time basis. And lastly, when we rely on screen readers, we tend to provide a, a limited in, in screen readers in applications such as uh, online shopping or even video games, we tend to provide a limited amount of information for our audiences, making their experience more complex rather than convincing. So in order for us to enhance the visual imagery of our audiences, we need to believe ourselves as in being in front of a, 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 a forensic sketch artist. So the more information we provide, the better results we will get. But if we provide limited to no information, will our experience be enjoyed? No, right? For someone that cannot see, that's not true. But in order for us to provide more information, we need to find more time to do it. And that is when the next alternative comes really handy. Sound introductions is actually an alternative that takes its influence from audio description in theater in which audiences are allowed to come before the play in order for them to interact with the stage, with the costumes, with the characters themselves, and also for the describer to provide a further description of the visual elements that cannot be described during the performance due to time limitations. But the innovative approach about this alternative is the fact that instead of being implemented in a real-time, in a real-life scenario, it will be implemented in audiovisual mediums by working on the concepts of visual imagery and semiotic sounds, in which detailed description is aimed to be remembered by short representations of sounds played before and during the experience in order to um, accomplish recognition and understanding. So the way that it works is the following. We have a, a term. Sorry, we provide our, our audiences with a sub-menu within our experience, in which we will have a term then a description, and then a sound effects that will be played before and during the experience. By doing that, we uh, allow our audiences to recognize the presence of visual features by the implementation of sound effects. We avoid the suppression of predominant elements that are important to understand our experience or content, and we create an, ex an interactive experience for our audiences. So we have already accomplished visual imagery thanks to the use of our audio introductions. And we also have accomplished um, proper understanding of visual features by the use of sound effects. So we have somehow opened the gates towards an experience that provides for the detailed understandings and developments. But what about immersion? How do we accomplish immersion in a medium in which that really replicates the reality of someone that is fully sighted to someone that is visually impaired? The answer for that could be 3D sound. So 3D sound, sorry, in majority of audiovisual mediums, they tend to implement sound in a stereo basis. Means that sounds will come either from the front, from the left, and from the right. But thanks to 3D sound, 
We can allow our audiences to determine the presence of visual elements that are coming from the front, from the bottom, from the back, and even closest to their ears. As they provide a sense of position, direction, and distance within a 360 degree field. This application has, the implementation of 3D sound has proven a lot of effective results in applications such as Microsoft Soundscape and also the ICAN navigational system for the visual impaired. But in audiovisual mediums, it also has proved how the implementation of good quality sound and, immerse, and 3D sound enhances the perception of visual elements for those who are sighted, while uh, enhancing the, the, the understanding of plot elements in films for those who are visually impaired. So the more we expand our sound is propagation, the closest we are to achieve immersion. But what about, but the thing is that even if we implement 3D sound, we still need to, uh, to raise somehow a bound between our audience and also our, our content. But how do we accomplish that? In order to do that, we need to start creating content that talks, sees, and listens through the eyes of our character rather than the eyes of the translator. So in order to accomplish it, we need to be the owners of our content's description to allow our audiences to create that bound within content and user. We need to take into account also that immersion has three stages, which are curiosity, sympathy, and transportation. 3D sound, the concept of oral audio introduction, and also the enhancement of sound effects can accomplish curiosity. But sympathy can be accomplished by, instead of asking an audio describer to describe your content, you can ask or design a specialized voice for your content. So the character will be the, the character of your experience, or even yourself can try it, to describe the visual elements of your content in order to create a special bond between you and your, and your product or content. By doing that, we accomplish transportation, we describe the elements that we want our audiences to listen to, and we can create that, um, an immersive storytelling experience that is not only accessible for the visually impaired, but it could be also um, functional for those who are, sighted in the, who are sighted. So in order to create experimental inclusive alternatives and giving importance to more than one sense, we need to um, add more elements to our experience, and also to rely more on the role of sound. And this is something that the role of sound and the other senses, such as touch. And this is something that has been done by, the, by these alternatives, such as oxide, that enhances the vision for per, uh, the peripheral vision for those who have uh, vision impairment, the ICANN application that applies the concept of 3D sound for uh, navigational systems, and also the haptic globes that, ha that allows those who are visually impaired to touch the, mon the, um, the, the exhibitions in museums in order for them to create an, a storytelling, uh, uh, sorry, uh, a visual imagery, a visual image of those elements that they cannot see. So to conclude, I would like to say that as content creators, we have the power to create an experience for some, but also to destroy it for others. That is why audiovisual mediums are so dangerous. But in order for us to create something that is more valuable for our audiences, we need to evolve from visual thinkers to audiovisual thinkers. By doing that, we will give more value to sound, to sound technologies, and we will start seeing how sound more than feeding or hearing and imagination, it also feeds our immersion with audiovisual mediums. In the field of accessibility, we are actually not lacking ideas or tools. What we are lacking is inclusion. But inclusion is only accomplished when actions are a result of empathy. Hence, we need to start breaking the standards and apply inclusive technology that follows our that not doesn't follow only our own tuition, but also it follows the, um, the experience, the, the perspective of the user. So how many of you have Twitter? Nice. So I have a challenge for you. Next time that you publish a picture, use accessibility to describe it. And you will start looking at how complex it might be to describe your picture only using 450 characters and how maybe perhaps your description, even if it makes your experience more accessible, it could also limit the visual imagery of your of audiences. 
but at the end you will be creating a content that is more inclusive and that people will appreciate. Um, also, if you are interested in doing work related to accessibility, reach an organization that helps the blind and partially sighted, because they always are willing to support people who have great initiatives and, they want, and people that want to reach that world in which all of us can, be, can have equal entertainment in, among audiovisual mediums. Also, as content creators, please remember, consider the role of sound. Don't leave it until the last uh, stages of the creation of your content. Allow the sound describer and also the accessibility specialist to come be the, between the pre-production stage in order for your content to be more accessible, more functional, and also to, open the, to break the barrier of inequality. Um, lastly, I would like to say that as content creators, we need to start creating, developing, and also consuming sound and technology with a purpose. By doing that, we will start listening to, the, to a world that is more immersive and where equality and understanding will be a norm. Once again, my name is Cesar Portillo, and thank you very much. Thank you, Cesar. Thanks. Do you have time for one question? Or yeah. Okay, so I think that we are ourselves, those organizations. And if we consider, the thing is that more money comes into place when we consider the, um, both the role of sound and accessibility later on in the, in the production of our product. So that's why I'm, I'm always focusing on saying, me and other individuals, like how by implementing, by considering these features in the pre-production stage, we can already estimate how much money we're going to waste, um, how um, this will have an impact in our audience, and etc. Organizations that can support that, um, I would say a good one to start to, to look more into accessibility would be the Royal National Institute of the Blind in the United Kingdom. They have really good resources about uh, audio description, and they are doing a great job in further advising people on how to include accessibility within their mediums. And also, like as I said, like communities are that are communities that are within that work within the area of for the blind and partially sighted are always willing to help. But yeah, th I think that that would be my answer. Ourselves, organizations, together we can create a difference. Thanks. <laughs> Another question or no? Great. If you had any questions or just want me to send you like a bit more resources, you can follow me on Twitter or send me an email. I'm always willing to help. Thank you very much, guys.